what I'm going to do is it's interesting to me that God never gets asked what she, he, she or it thinks and nobody ever wonders what God thinks but God has actually done a lot of talking in the books of the prophets and through the gospels and in the gospel, uh, book of Revelation so I'm not going to make my argument uh, scripture so the book of the prophet Isaiah the Lord says the Lord stands up to plead a cause the people's leaders have been misleaders so that they that are led have been confused my argument is not based on my own opinions, but those of God as he reveals himself in the books of the prophets and those of Jesus as he reveals himself in the Gospels, and in particular the book of Revelation. The Vatican have extensive knowledge of these uh, books, but uh, I will show you what the Vatican do not. That the very idea the Catholic Church could be salvaged is actually entirely against Christ's teachings. It's against the Catholic Church's own teachings. I will show you that the end of religion is in fact the core of Christ's message and that to believe that any Christian church will survive is consequently anti-Christian because it is opposite to Christ's revelation. Uh, now, I'm not going to take questions during this. I'll take them after. Please don't interrupt me. And remember, I didn't write the books. I'm just reading it. <laughs> <laughs> also, please be ready to take two notes along the way so as to help yourself make a decision at the end of this. The books of the prophets. A prophet, by the way, is a person God chooses to speak on his behalf. For some reason, God doesn't have a voice that works like ours does. This isn't explained by scripture. Uh, the prophets are only ever sent to talk to religious leaders, kings, and politicians. Okay? <laughs> this is the way it goes. The books of prophets repeatedly reveal, as Tony will know, God is a furiously anti-religious character. Isaiah chapter 1. Your new moons and fixed seasons fill me with loathing. They are an obstacle to me. I cannot endure them. Your hands are stained with crime. Your wine is cut with water. Your, rollers, your rulers are rogues and the cronies of thieves. Trample my courts no more. Isaiah chapter 10. Those who write out evil writs and compose iniquitous documents and have fatherless children as their booty, to whom will you flee when calamity comes? Your stored wealth will become as paper and he who amassed it as spark. He is emphatic in the book of Jeremiah that he never wanted religion and it has crucified him. Jeremiah 2 verse 5, what wrong did your fathers find in me that they abandoned me and went after delusion and were deluded? The priests never asked himself, where is the Lord? The guardians of the teachings ignore me. He is referring to Exodus chapter 20 verses 2, 3 and 5. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other but me. You shall not bow down to sculptured images. Jeremiah chapter 2 continues, But my people have exchanged its glory for what can do no good. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be utterly dazed, for my people have done a twofold wrong. They have forsaken me, the fount of living waters, and hewn themselves out cisterns, broken cisterns, which cannot even hold water. He states his agony over the separation caused by religion between himself and ourselves, with whom he had intended a direct relationship but has been cock-blocked. <laughs> Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 4. Oh, my suffering, my suffering, how I writhe Oh, the walls of my heart. Because my people are shattered, I am shattered, seized by desolation. Why has healing not yet come from my poor people? Oh, that my head were water. Oh, that my eyes were a fount of tears. I would weep day and night for my poor people. In Jeremiah chapter 7, God asked religious leaders, Will you steal and murder and swear falsely, and then come and stand before me in my house, which bears my name, and say we're safe, safe to do all these abhorrent things? Do you consider this house, which bears my name, to be a den of thieves? As for me, I've been watching. Now, Jesus smashed up the temple money men and then said in Mark chapter 3, verse 28, all the sins of man will be forgiven but one, and that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Lying in the living presence of the Holy Spirit about the cover-ups of the rapes, theft, sale, and even manslaughter of children is such a blasphemy. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Note these down, please. These are the three most important sentences that Christ ever uttered. And Tony, this is what I think is going to give you some reassurance in the issue that you face in your heart. Regardless, okay? These words are incendiary. Please remember I use the word incendiary. <clears throat> also note the word law in each of these verses refers to religion. Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish but to fulfill. I tell you that not the smallest letter nor the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all that is written has been fulfilled. The key word here is until. 
He is stating religion will exist until the books of the prophets have been fulfilled. He is stating that the books of the prophets will be fulfilled. The books of the prophets end with the end of religion. He is a militantly anti-religious man because he is God upon earth. The very last book of prophecy is also the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. I refer you back to the earlier passage from Isaiah. Your stored wealth shall become as paper and he who amassed it as spark. Catholic Encyclopedia states that it is within the city of Rome, called the city on seven hills of the entire Vatican state proper is now confined. I want you to remember, please, the city on seven hills. Revelation concerns the core Christian belief that Christ will come again and religion will end. It is the completion of Christ's mission as described in chapter 21, chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race and the old order has passed away. Revelation chapter 17, a woman sits upon a beast who has seven heads. Scripture states, one of the angels said to me, come here and I will show you the judgment on the woman wearing purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones. She held in her hand a gold cup that was filled with her abominable deeds. The angel said to me, here's a clue for one who has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven hills on which the, on which the woman sits. Then he said to me, the woman represents the great city that has sovereignty, sovereignty, over the kings of the earth. Chapter 18 states, Then I saw another angel come down from heaven, and he cried in a mighty voice, Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great! She has become a haunt for demons. She is a cage for every unclean and disgusting beast. And then I heard another voice from heaven say, Depart from her, my people, for her sins are piled up to the sky. And God remembers her crimes, for she said to herself, I sit enthroned as queen, and I am no widow, and I shall never know grief. The kings of the earth will weep and mourn over her when they see the smoke of her pyre. Revelation 18 continues, When they see the smoke of her pyre, the princes of the world cry out, Alas, great city, wearing fine linen, purple and scarlet. In one hour your judgment has come. In one hour this great wealth has been ruined. Verse 21, A mighty angel picked up a stone like a huge millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such force will Babylon be thrown down, and no light from a lamp will ever be seen in you again. Because your commerce was with the princes of the earth, all nations were led astray by your sorcery. Smoke will rise from you forever and ever. Revelation chapter 22 tells you what happens afterwards, and this is Tony, what I think you will find reassuring. One of the angels says, come here and I will show you the true bride of the Lamb. He took me to a high mountain and he showed me the holy city coming down from God. And remember what we read earlier, God's dwelling, behold God's dwelling is with the human race. What I will say next are the 17 most important words in scripture. Revelation chapter 21. I saw, verse two, I saw no temple in this city, for its temple is the Lord God and the Lamb. I saw no temple in this city, for its temple is the Lord God and the Lamb. There is no religion in God's plan. The closing passages of, of Revelation, and therefore there's no religion in Christ's plan either, by the way, and uh, the closing passage of Revelation, and therefore the Bible states, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord God of prophetic spirits has sent his angel to show his servants what must happen, what must happen soon. Behold, the Lord is coming soon, and blessed is the one who keeps the prophetic message, the book of Revelation, that Christ will come again and abolish all religion and establish God's dwelling on earth, a direct relationship with his subject. If you do not believe that you are not a Christian and you do not understand the scriptures or not the book of Revelation, Christ will survive Catholicism. He, he never needed it in the first place. It was nothing but an obstacle. 